Hi, Steve here with PageKey Solutions. Today we're starting a series on four essential sorts explained and implemented in Python. First, we're going to go through quicksort. The four sorts we'll talk about are quicksort, merge sort, bubble sort, and insertion sort. However, quicksort is probably one of the harder ones, so pay attention in this lesson and the rest will be smooth sailing downhill. Here's a cheat sheet that I pulled from bigocheatsheet.com. It's just a subset of the many things that they have available there. I just wanted to look at the four sorts we're talking about today. So you'll notice, worst case, everybody pretty much has O of n squared. Not great. For the average case, quick sort and merge sort beat out bubble sort and insertion sort. Even if these two guys are a little simpler, quick sort and merge sort are better in the average case. And compared to merge sort, quick sort has better space complexity. So if you care about time and you care about space, quick sort is not a bad case. In some cases, it depends on your data set. Uh, I think quicksort has its worst case when the data is already sorted, or it's in reverse order. I'm not sure, you can fact check me on that. But in many cases for a large data set, quicksort will perform well. So we'll jump right into the quicksort algorithm. Uh, the basics, it's been around since 1960, invented by C.A.R. Hoare. Quicksort's recursive, divide and conquer, and there's basically two levels of understanding, the quicksort method itself and an important method that it calls called partition. Partition is the meat of the algorithm in which you choose a pivot, place it in its correct position in the final sorted array, then you can quicksort each half for, to the left of that sorted element and to the right of it. So there's two ways of doing that and we'll get to it later. First, we'll look at quicksort from a bird's eye view. You're passed three things to quicksort, the array you want to sort, low and high. So if you're trying to sort the entire array, low will be zero and high will be the length of the array minus one, covering every element. But subcalls will use different values for low and high. So the first thing we do is check if low is less than high. This is basically a base case, kind of, because if high is greater than or equal to low, there is one or less elements to sort, so we can just return. That's our base case. One or less elements, simply return, there's nothing to do. However, if low is less than high, there is some stuff that we can do. First, we determine the pivot point by calling partition. It puts one element in the array in its proper place, and then everything to the left of that element is less than that element. Everything to the right is greater than or equal. Even if the left side of that element, if things to the left are jumbled and things to the right are jumbled, we know that that element is in the right place. So we can sort the left side of the array from that point and the right side of the array from that point. So now let's visualize that. Given this array 52734, we're going to call the little black box we know as partition, and it's going to take this element, call it the pivot, swap it into the right place. So now partition comes back and tells us, okay, I've messed with the array. You'll notice all the elements have been moved around a little bit, and element four is in the right place. So you don't have to mess with four, you're good. So given that, we're gonna sort the right, or I'm sorry, the left and the right side of this already sorted element. So we're going to pass 3 and 2 to our partition method. It returns 2. It says 2 is already sorted, so sort the left and right of 2. Now there's nothing to the left of 2, and to the right of 2, there's only 3. So we pass 3. It's like, oh, 3 is one element, returns. So then we can do the right half, which is already in order, but we're still going to go through the motions of passing partition, our little subarray. It says 5 is OK, and then we can pass 7. It partitions that and says it's okay. And we're done. So from a bird's eye view, creepy smiley face, we are all good with quicksort. So that's all fine and dandy. And uh, we'll look at this too, if you wanna check this out. Basically it sets the pivot, puts two in its right place. Everything to the left of two is less. Everything to the right is greater. And then it sorts the left half from two and the right half from two. And the left half is okay. The right half is like five, put it in place, blah, 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 blah. We just talked about it. Uh, one thing to note is the quick sort method is pretty generic across different partitioning methods, except for one little thing. When you call quick sort from low to the pivot, for Lamuto method, it's P minus one. For Hoare method, it's just P. So literally that little bit of the expression right there is the only difference between the two. So look out for that and don't mess it up if you're doing one or the other, but you'll see it in the code. Partition. We're going to return the index of a pivot and we're also going to swap things around in the array so that everything to the left of that pivot is less, everything to the right is greater than or equal. 
I had a lot of trouble when I was researching this because it seemed like everyone on YouTube had their own way of doing partitioning. Everyone kind of did it just a little bit different and I couldn't figure it out until finally somebody pointed me to the Wikipedia page where it outlined that there are two methods, Lemuto method and Hoar method. Lemuto method is a little easier to understand and then Hoar method is the original method by the person who created the quicksort algorithm and it's slightly more efficient. So the Lemuto method, here's the pseudocode, just take a second to peek at it. Basically we're going to have a wall and we're going to scan the array from left to right and every time we find something that's less than our pivot value, we're going to stick it behind the wall. So we're going to swap it with the wall and increase the wall by one. You'll see that in the visualization. So if we wanted to do the Lemuto method on this array of 52734 and find the partition point, we're going to set everything up. We're going to set wall and I to zero. They're going to start all the way to the left and we'll select the pivot to be four all the way to the right. So our first check is the position I five less than four. No. So we keep going. Now we check is two less than four. It is. So two is less than four. That means it fits on the left hand side. We can stick it behind the wall. So we will swap five and two. And now we'll move the wall up by one. So now two is behind the wall confirmed less than the pivot. We'll move I up again is seven less than four. No. So keep going is three less than four true, it belongs behind the wall. So swap I and wall, in other words, swap five and three, move the wall up by one. So two and three are now both behind the wall and we'll keep searching. Actually, we're done. We just reached the pivot and we're not gonna run this on the pivot. So the final step is to swap the wall and the pivot. Now that we've swapped those things into place, we can return to, which is the position of our pivot, which is now in its correct place. So the final position for this array is for four is right there. It's not going to move again. If you'll notice everything to the left of two, or I'm sorry, everything to the left of four is less than four. Everything to the right is greater than four. So we're going to call quick sort on those two halves. It just happens to be a bad example that everything's already sorted, but you would still quick sort those halves because they could be jumbled. If you wanted to see the actual code, here's the Python code that runs the Lemuda method that we just talked about. And I'm just going to page through it very quickly. Um, this took way too long and I don't find it particularly useful. But if you want to watch this over and over again, you can see it happen. So there we go. Everything to the left is less, everything to the right is greater, and it's complete. That's how the code executes. So the whore method, uh, you're past the same things, array low, high. And what we're going to do this time is scan from the left and scan from the right. So you're going to set I to low. You're also going to set the pivot to a value at low. And I is going to move from the left to the right, making sure that everything that it sees is less than the pivot. If it finds something that doesn't meet that rule, it'll stop. Same thing for J. It's going to scan until it finds something that doesn't belong on the right side. It is the representative of the right side of the pivot. Once I and J have both stopped and they're not equal, which means you're not done yet, you're going to swap I and J because they both found something on the wrong side. So you just swap them out so that whatever should be on the left is on the left. Whatever should be on the right is on the right. So let's see that in action. First, we're going to set our pivot to five and just move it off to the side because we might move that pivot around. We might move that uh, five value around, but we just want to remember everything is based on that five and it'll work out. So our first check is five less than five. That is not true. So according to I, the guardian of the left side. Five is in the wrong place. It is not less, so it should not be on the left side. We actually just happen to run into the same problem on J's side. Four is not greater than five, so it doesn't belong on J's right-hand side. So both I and J found things that are on the wrong side. Now we can swap position I and position J. Once you swap five and four, it's business as usual and we're good to go. So we go back to checking. Is four less than five? Yes, we're fine. Four, you're on the right side, good going. Same for two. Two, you're on the right side, keep it up. Seven is less than five, not the case. So, I has found its sticking point. Now we'll move over to J. Five is definitely not greater than five. Five is the troublemaker. So, I and J have both found things on the wrong side yet again. So we will swap seven and five. It's a swap opportunity, swap them out. And we can keep going with our day. Five less than five, wrong. So we found another problem with five. I does not think five should be on the left side. J will now find something in the wrong place. Uh, seven is properly on the right side. It's greater than the pivot. Three, you should not be on the right side. So 
J found three in the wrong place, I found five in the wrong place, we can swap them out. Swap five and three. There we go. And we'll continue. Three is less than five, that's on the correct side for I. I moves up, and five is less than five. Once again, five has caused a problem. It is not less than itself. So, J sees the same problem, it's not greater than itself. However, now we check. I equals J, or I is greater than or equal to J. So our work here is done. They have collided, and they have found the point where the pivot should lie. And it just happens that the pivot is also there. That's not a coincidence. So we're going to return index 3, and we're all set. Return index 3, which contains 5 now. And 5 is in its final sorted position. Just like with the Lemuto method, everything to the left-hand side is less than 5, and everything to the right-hand side is greater than or equal to 5. The two sides are jumbled, but that's okay, because they're going to get quick sorted too. So those subarrays will go through the exact same procedure we just went through now. So I tried to create a step-by-step -step for the whore method, but it came out terrible. So here's the code, take a look at it, and we'll move on. So that's all I have for the quick sort. Um, source code tests, and if you find any problems with the code, can be found at github.com slash stephengrice slash youtube and I'll show you how to get there now. So here's the source repository for all my YouTube videos. You can check out sorts and go to either the quick sorts, Lemuto or Hor. And here's the full code, heavily commented, maybe too many comments. There it is for you to check out and the test code. So if you wanted to run the test code, just run this test class and it'll make sure that both get sorted properly. Credits for this video, I use some icons that can be found on flaticon.com. Buy, smash icons, and free pick. Great icons, thank you. Also, time and complexity info from that table are from bigocheatsheet.com. And music used in this video, if there is any, can be found in the description. Thank you for watching, and feel free to subscribe or whatever. Leave comments if you find problems, and thanks for watching.